and hello and welcome to Alex Kinex Creative Sandbox making WWE Superstars art. My name is Alex and today we are continuing to sculpt in Park. Apparently because uh, it's too long of a process unfortunately we're going to sculpt CM Punk for this is our first sculpting portrait personally uh, my personally uh, first sculpting portrait and because it's first uh, it's going to take me for a long time I believe uh, uh, until we're going to establish some type of a process so basically what we're doing right now one of the reasons why it takes so long uh, this is the second week already and uh, I, like I don't have that much time to work on CM Punk on side of the streams, like don't, on this portrait, because again, uh, I just have so has, have so many things to do. Besides that, that I'm just like basically can't put like find time to do that. Like most of this week, I worked on painting stuff, like um, on basically figuring out uh, how to create a personal personal brushes and basically studied brushes and etc. So um, for now, there's a lot of things that I still doing besides that, and um, until uh, I'm going to kind of set these things in motion um, and start to work on painting portraits separately and of course then um, finish with the theory with artistic theory and etc especially with the brushes and etc so once this all done we're finally will be able to sculpt things a little bit much more faster and maybe we're going to see each week a completely different character uh, not like you're probably not going to see how I'm completely sculpting this character from beginning to the end uh, I don't know how exactly to, like to do this maybe maybe I will record this video and then basically show you the whole process uh, speed up a little bit and while I'm going to talk it's going to be kind of speed up there so I still don't know again what type of format we're going to stream in it's still kind of a um, kind of a test uh, in terms of uh, what exactly the type of format we're going to represent but one thing that's 100% we're going to definitely sculpt something either it's going to be pre-recorded and then I'm going to basically uh, put visuals out there either in real time or a little bit speed up um, and we're going to talk about WWE this is never going to change and the same thing never going to change hopefully and uh, hopefully but like never going to change the fact that we're going to talk about the art so for instance previous session was the first session that we in most cases talked about the artistic stuff. Um, yesterday we um, talked about a pretty interesting kind of concept that I come up with is structural engineering dependency. Um, again, once uh, I'm going to talk about structural engineering dependency more and more and more, and even when I'm going to uh, basically during this video uh, while I'm going to talk about WWE. Um, uh, and show you a somewhat pre-recorded thing that I did for Simpunk, uh, like just did, <laughs> just stopped recording. Uh, it it will take for about an hour or so for this recording, and during this recording, I basically will talk about WWE, and in some places, I'm going to stop and basically talk about creative stuff, what's happening on the screen, and set uh, exactly. So, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. So let's just talk about WWE. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about, and I, need, I didn't necessarily prepare stuff. Unfortunately, I completely forgot about it uh, because I was too kind of preoccupied with the CM Punk stain. Uh, so yeah, let's just uh, launch the recording itself. Uh, so while recording is basically happening, we are going to do stuff. The other thing that I wanted to show though before we will go is a um, quick process where we started from and where we heading uh, because it might be a good idea to do this so or maybe I'm not going to. No I'm not going to. Uh, again uh, you can check the previous recordings the, like the first two already posted on YouTube uh, in a Making WW Superstars art uh, playlist specifically created for it and all these videos of course are going to be available uh, on weekend uh, on YouTube too uh, because unfortunately I can't show this thing because there's a lot of lo like a lot, a lot of references launched and I don't I don't want to screw this um, so yeah um, yeah so basically starting uh, while it's going to happen, uh, again, in most cases what I did in this sculpting, it's not necessarily a sculpting uh, kind of portion of the session, um, it's, uh, it was um, basically preparing things before going into the stage of 
actual anatomy. Uh, so one thing that I made is I, I made sure that the eyes are going to be placed a little bit much more properly. Um, so we talked about this. So I put them a little bit closer. And then what are you going to see while well, I'm going to talk about WWE? Not to distract myself is basically me uh, working with this element of structural engineering de dependency. So before we we're going to sculpt uh, on top of the skull, other um, basically uh, facial features, an anatomical facial features, and the anatomy itself, we need to put things that are not present on the skeleton. So because of this, we're going to put an egg first. Then we're going to create a um, kind of a base for the neck. Uh, we're going to create base for the ears, and we're going to create base for the nose. Uh, not necessarily in this order. Uh, first, there's going to be probably a neck. The second one is going to be uh, um, the nose, and then there's going to be an ears. And unfortunately, I didn't finish working on ears. It was already time to start streaming, and they're pretty crappy. So, if we have time, I will continue to work on ears to, uh, throughout the stream. So. Yeah, so in most cases, uh, what you're going to see is going to be uh, a good example of, yes, <laughs> um, of working with structural engineering dependency. So in order to create a skull, we started with the skull base. That, that base was pretty close to the skull and then we basically sculpted the details. Um, the same kind of approach we're going to use for neck, the same kind of approach we're going to use for the nose, but we're going to connect this, connect connect these pieces together and the same kind of thing we're going to make for e for an e for uh, ears so you're basically going to see throughout this first hour of uh, pre-recorded video while I'm going to talk about WWE's um, uh, kind of changes uh, NXT, Mayan Classic and predictions towards Hell in a Cell uh, which is going to be this Sunday um, you're going to see um, basically what type of primitives I used and how I approached working with those primitives, so how I reshape them and then basically then right away sculpt the details. So the, the, the way that I created a nose, the way that I created a uh, ear, ears, uh, this basically pretty close to, to the low structural engineering dependency that we're usually using to create non-organic things. So we don't need to create like the whole structure of the ear inside, we just, and the nose itself. Uh, we're just putting two basic primitives, we're combining them together and then we're shaping from them something uh, by adding details. The same kind of way um, we could ideally approach the face. Um, and most of the artists are doing so, they're not going through the skull stage, they're just like creating a base primitive and then using a couple of adding details, putting details on this primitive and make this primitive look a little bit more and more and more like the human uh, person's face that they're basically working with. Um, so because of this, um, kind of, uh, but I don't believe that it's a kind of, again, it works only for experienced artists, as I said before, uh, the more experienced you are, the better you, you're not going to depend on this structural engineering dependency, which seems like redundant in terms of depend on dependency. But again, structural engineering dependency is just a con concept that allows us to figure out how to approach creating objects and subjects from the get-go, like from the ground up. So, I mean, um, we need to understand how we're going to approach to create any type of form, organic form, non-organic form, every part of this organic and non-organic form, form. For instance, for the, for the skull itself, we approached a high uh, engineering dependency uh, because we need to build a skull. We need to be, before we're building a skull, we're creating a base for the skull. Then we're putting muscles, and only then we're going to put facial features uh, and other and other stuff. So we can't go right right away uh, by skipping all this process because every step will help us to make character look more similar to the character that we're working with. And in this particular instance, this is CM Punk. So because of this, uh, let's just check the sound by the way. The character that we're working with, the yeah, sound works. So and because of this, um, and a kind of structural engineering dependency for the human, f uh, for the human face, usually going to be a high, uh, on a high level. Um, uh, for the uh, for the rest of the parts, for instance, for the nose. We're just going to combine two primitives. We're going to combine cylinder and sphere. Um, uh, for the ear, we're going to use two cylinders. And for the neck, of course, we're going to use, for now, uh, we didn't finish the neck, but for now, it's kind of established one big cylinder. And later, we're going to kind of put muscles on top of the cylinder. So, um, 
uh, it's kind of a good example with the neck uh, because neck is going to have a um, middle structural engineering dependency so ears and nose are going to have low structural engineering dependency so we're not going to basically uh, create any type of crazy stuff with them mm, but for the neck we actually going to add a lot of anatomical uh, kind of knowledge on top of this primitive and this will make this thing semi structural engineering dependency or semi structural engineering engineering dependent I don't know um, so yeah um, again, we're going to talk about this while we're going to go with like go to this. So right now I'm kind of struggling to put primitive in a proper way. I'm I'm usually not using uh, IMM primitives, uh, the special brush that basically allows you to put right away on the sculpt itself uh, primitives. Um, there's a two ways to do this in ZBrush. Of course, you can just append or any type of primitive separately or just do this with the IMM primitives. Uh, I want to learn IMM primitives, so for me it's kind of still. Uh, getting adjusting to it um, so you're basically choosing the proper primitives and then uh, in the draw mode drawing it and then positioning it in the proper way so while I'm struggling with this I guess let's just start to talk about WWE um, so uh, we actually have a lot of things to talk about and most of the things that we actually need to um, visualize I mean okay and because we have this recording, then I can't necessarily open things. So that means that we're going to talk about main classic a little bit later because we need to actually open the whole intellectual map in order to do that. And since we're not able to open intellectual map during this recording, I mean, because it's going to overlap, um, uh, I'm going to basically talk about NXT for this hour, uh, throughout this hour, and I'm going to talk about... No, by the way, let's just make the normal speed because I kind of made the speed a little bit... Oh no. Give me a second. Uh, so... Yep, so speed 1. Because before that, the speed was probably 090 or something like this. So now it's actually real time. Um, so yeah, um, uh, while we can't show the actual intellectual maps with uh, basically Mayan Classic uh, brackets and we need to kind of update them uh, because there's a couple of new, new new winners added and I completely forget about it because I just watched it. Um, so with NXT, so what 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 we're going to talk about, what we're going to talk about for now then is we're going to talk about first about the predictions on Sunday Hell in a Cell, and after we're going to deal uh, like deal with the predictions, we're going to talk about the new stuff that transpired on NXT. If I hopefully remember what was there because I forgot to basically take notes during the this process and if I will remember then of course we're going to talk about it if not apparently we're going to talk about it later so um, so so first let's just talk about uh, everything that kind of like er every match and uh, quickly talk about predictions and just go this uh, like put the predictions away or and um, yes yeah, so um, and continue with NXT and Mayan Classic um, so, the first match that is going to, of course, take place on uh, Hell in a Cell. Oh, come on, Hell in a Cell, not Extreme Rules, man. Shkola! <coughs> okay, that was... Okay, sorry about that. Um, so, wait a sec, I need to make one stuff. Structure and logical chart left yep so um out oh, damn it no my eye is super aging oh no my eye is aging oh no oh no my eye is aging <laughs> well my eye is itchy uh, tony is going to provide some uh freaking eyelash I have pretty big eyelashes and they're constantly falling off into my eyes and it's not awesome. It's not awesome at all. It's super annoying. Yeah, damn it. No, I had to get rid of this eyelash so in my eye, so uh, I gonna I'm gonna take a quick second and I'm going to be back, so uh wait a sec. That was not cool. 
So you're probably going to hear me though. So. the freaking eyelash from from my eye now my eye doesn't have a, an eyelash in inside of it who sometimes it's so super weird when a couple of eyelashes basically falling off and when the groups of eyelashes are hitting your eye it's super painful and to put them uh, out of there it's not sometimes an easy task to do um, so yeah getting back um, so continuing um, so basically um, Hell in a Cell which is going to be six, six, September 16th um, they're going to give us uh, how many matches 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 about 8 matches during the pay-per-view and of course there are going to, going to be some type of matches that we're probably going to know about them a little bit later maybe closer to the Hell in a Cell maybe on Friday, maybe on uh, Sunday um, you know yeah, maybe on Sunday, or maybe on Saturday, or exactly during the pre-show. So uh, basically, the only matches that are not 100% sure what what they're going to be, we're going to like throw away a couple of speculations. What type of matches could be uh, could possibly transpire on Hell at Hell and Cell's pre-show? Um, uh, but before, let's just talk about the things that are going to be uh, kind of placed. Uh, on the actual eight matches. So, um, we're going to talk about them, not necessarily in the order of the SmackDown and Raw. I guess we're just going to talk about them, like, one by one. So, um, so the first match uh, potentially could be a SmackDown Tag Team Championships, New Day versus Rusev Day, because I truly believe that this is one of the matches that you probably have to put on a freaking uh, pre-show because of the Rusev Day, because I'm not necessarily kind of big of a big fan of the Rusev Day uh, tag team. Um, like, I don't have anything against Rusev uh, separately, and I don't have anything against Aiden English. I just don't like their dynamic, like, in terms of their... Um, like, I'm not seeing them as tag team championships for some reason. It's kind of the same goes with the... Um, with Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. Um, you just can't see them champion like as champions uh, because they're kind of presented a little bit as a comedy act and kind of the same goes for the Rusev. Uh, he he with it in English kind of presents some type of a comedy act. Although I don't believe that it's a purely comedy act. It has some drama to it, but it's still kind of some sometimes perceived as a comedy. And for me, the comedy acts are I, I usually not taking them seriously. And if they're winning tag team champions, it's completely fine. Uh, it, which is sounds weird because New Day is the pure comedy act and they're hell hell. Uh, holding tag team championships and they're holding them for a long time already and I mean before that they held them for a long period of time so I don't know why exactly it this but maybe because New Day is pushed uh, and because of their comedy act they're not necessarily perceived as a comedy act uh, because they're big stars big star comedy act and when you see that the, like for instance B team it's just like quick comedy act which is not going to stand for a long period of time and you're not necessarily believing it. So, I don't know, it's just weird. So yeah, we're not going to talk about this stuff. Uh, what's happening with the camera, though? Yeah, by the way, right now I have a proper clothes. Uh, in the previous stream, I completely forgot about changing the clothes because I have two different uh, sweaters or some kind of jumpers, I don't know how to properly call them in English. So, basically, and I'm using each of them for certain, so, uh, for certain platforms. So, for Twitch, I'm using uh, the purple one which is basically works with the Twitch and for YouTube I'm using a red one which is actually looked like a Freddy Krueger one <laughs> it's it's super interesting um, so um, in order to basically set the kind of vibe uh, for the YouTube uh, and kind of separate those two elements but unfortunately I completely forgot to switch it to the tomorrow or yesterday and it was pretty bad because only after I finished stream I figured this out and I was kind of disappointing personally because 
I specifically created those things for certain platforms and when Twitch clothes uh, clothes are interfering with YouTube, it seems weird in terms of the streaming, live streaming. But in the end, it's going to be uh, on recording, so it doesn't matter, I guess. Um, so yeah, uh, getting back to it. So, uh, and um, in terms of the who's going to win, New Day or Rusev Day, I believe that New Day is going to stay acting champions because I don't, tr like personally, I don't see Rusev Day as, uh, like, uh, as tag team championships, but again, it's SmackDown, it's a land of opportunity, and sometimes the changing of the titles could go uh, on a little bit more co like um, constant basis. So we might see change in the tag team championships there. Um, um, but again, I truly uh, kind of basically I'm predicting that you uh, predicting that New Day will stay tag team championships because. This feud not necessarily was the properly put uh, out there, so I like truly I don't recall how exactly this feud worked because they're not necessarily a feud with each other. Um, I believe New Day against the Bar was a little bit more kind of pronounced feud than with the Rusev Day. Rusev Day kind of appeared with Angel in English. Rusev Day in English, English kind of appeared out of nowhere and right away got into the uh, kind of. In a title team picture and it was pretty weird so i'm not buying them as a tag team championships yet so if they're going to win i'm going to be happy for them uh, i'm going to be happy for them as per usual and no matter who's going to win i always happy for them um but personally for me i wouldn't want to see them champions uh it's better for new day to stay championship champions and hope to push other basically teams maybe this is exactly what they're doing maybe they're pushing rusev and in english although i don't believe in their um tag team they're completely different personalities and they don't fit together personally for me like the brute rusev and weird saying aid in english it just creates a weird dynamic with lana it's just kind of ugh, i don't know personally for me it's weird um, so yeah, so right here I am def definitely uh, believe that New Day is going to stay the champions. So continuing to Raw Stack Team Championships, which is again Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre against half of the Shield or not half of the Shield, so basically a portion of the Shield set, Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Um, it's much more harder right here because first it's Raw, although Raw, Raw it's not that like hot on changing titles but still I believe this is one of the things that could make Shield and Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins rele relevant and although I want for Dol Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre to stay with titles but unfortunately uh, like my guts telling me that Rollins and Ambrose are going to win championships and um, actually no it's, it could go both ways if Ambrose and Rollins are going to basically it all depends uh, what's, who's going to win Hell in a Cell with Braun Strowman and, and, Rome, and Roman Reigns. So it could be an interesting dynamic. I mean, there's so many possibilities when it could go, uh, when could when this could go. So the first possibility, if Braun Strowman is going to win the title uh, with Ro from Roman Reigns, and um, after Braun Strowman is going to win the title from Roman Reigns, Dolph Ziggler and uh, uh, McIntyre will stay with the titles and we're going to see a 3-0 with the titles basically the whole th uh, the whole team with the titles the opposite is also true for the shield we could see the shield with with the titles basically shield could hold the old titles that actually the men's division has on the show so Seth Rollins uh, holding a Intercontin Intercontinental, I believe, yes, United States holding Shinsuke, yeah, so Intercontinental, um, Tag Team Championships, and uh, WWE Championship, come on, if Roman Reigns, of course, is going to uh, defend his championship, which is a pretty interesting idea, so it all depends not what I am thinking and what I necessarily want, but what company wants, and we don't know what company exactly wants, because company could go both ways, um, uh, they definitely, like, I don't believe that they're going to give Braun Strowman uh, kind of the loss, because if Braun Strowman is going to lose, he's going to basically fail in cashing in, and since he's a freaking giant, uh, for giant to, like, 
put in a history books the fact that he's he basically lost um, his money in the bank contract cash in so uh, like for instance baron corbin one of those who said in history as the first one who basically not first one probably one of those who basically lost money in the bank and cashed in in the wrong time in the wrong place and with Braun Strowman, I don't believe this is going to be the case. So if he is actually cashing in, I don't believe that he's going to win um, or that he's going to lose. But at the same time, the fact that he actually cashed in like weeks before the actual match, it's it could be the possibility for distance himself for the, from the actual money in the bank thing. And even if he's, he's going to lo lose uh, the match itself, it's not going to be perceived as his, his as for him as losing the necessarily the cash in. So he cashed in. He basically how like went through the match, but he did he didn't necessarily win. So um, I don't know. So it's it's a weird thing. And other thing that could happen, uh, other two kind of things, is Braun Strowman is going to win championship. Um, from Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins are going to win championships too. That way, um, the reason to give championships uh, part of the to part of the Shield is um, to basically make Roman Reigns relevant in the main event. Although he's going to stay in the main event, but still make Re Roman Reigns relevant with the Shield as a Basically, he's going to head around the shield uh, while he, she, they are going to be a tag team champions because if they're not going to win tag team championships, nothing necessarily holds them together. Uh, and again, I don't know how for how long this feud three on three will continue, and because of this, we don't know what plans uh, of the WWE are on on this type of kind of feud, where it's going to go and how it's going to continue. Because of this, I can't 100% say who's going to win in terms of uh, neither tag team championships or uh, the actual WWE, uh, the Universal Championship. I believe Universal Championship, personally for me, I want Braun Strowman win. Um, and I want Drew McIntyre and um, Ziggler continue to hold these titles. Uh, and hopefully this feud will continue somehow. Uh, up to the WrestleMania, when on WrestleMania we're going to see a crazy match, which will put all titles on hold, uh, or basically on the line, and they all are going to face in a super tornado tag team s with six people, and basically whoever is going to win uh, is going to take all titles together, which seems crazy and completely unrealistic, but I believe it could happen, so... Uh, kind of a little bit of speculation so it's actually pretty kind of an interesting idea uh, that they might go towards um, and in order to for this idea to happen we need to give titles uh, basically take away title from Roman and uh, don't give titles to Dean and Seth because again I believe Dean and Seth has to uh, have a separate feud when Dean is going to go against Seth Seth Rollins in order to um, go like basically pay back for his injury because because of the Seth Rollins Dean Ambrose was injured and I still believe that he's kind of holding some type of grudge and I would want to see Dean Ambrose as a heel so because of this kind of because I have my own personal kind of uh, expectations from this I don't want for Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose to take the titles, although they're both on fire and it's completely would be awesome for them to take the titles, but I don't want them to do that. So Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre, they need more, they need push more than Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. And Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose are, are already a superstars, uh, kind of, uh, they're already future legends, pretty close to the Randy Orton, Batista and Cena of those days, um, and Rey Mysterio. So, uh, that were kind of uh, that held uh, the company on their shoulders the same goes for the the whole shield they are kind of the things that holding company together almost like in in most cases and uh, people like Braun Strowman people like uh, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler they need to be pushed further if they want to kind of create some type of an interesting feuds uh, big feuds between um, 
the giants that basically holding the company on their shoulders and those who come uh, to dethrone those giants uh, from the throne. Um, so because of this, I believe um, John McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler will will defend their titles and and of course Roman Reigns is going to lose the title and Braun Strowman is going to win and then they're going to kind of continue to feud as the trio um, and maybe it's going to go somewhere in an awesome place. So yeah, this is uh, about this. So the next thing is Daniel Bryan versus uh, and Brie Bella versus Miz and Maurice, which is again I believe one of the most anticipated matches by me personally. Um, right here, I have no uh, kind of mm, doubts that Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella are going to win. Although I would want to see this this feud much longer and. If I want to see this feud much longer, I believe Maurice and Miz has have to win. So again, in order to go with longevity of the storytelling, I believe that this story could could be told for a long time. And since there's not necessarily a place for Miz separately and for um, Daniel Bryan separately, unless they're going to just feud one on one. Um, is to make sure that Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella are going to win, uh, or are going to lose, and they will continue to basically seek revenge uh, from basically Mizanins. Uh Hopefully, or justice, I don't know what they're actually doing with this, uh, I believe it's kind of a revenge slash justice. So because of this, um, I want... Uh, I want Miss and Maurice to win, and because of this, I believe we need to go with this. Yep, Miz and Maurice are going to win. Because I want to continue to... I, I want to continue uh, this feud. Truly, I love this feud. And this is one of the coolest feuds uh, in the long time on SmackDown. And because of this, uh, it still has a long way to go. And I don't believe that it needs to be finished. And if Daniel Bryan is going to actually win with, with Brie Bella, uh, then this feud kind of not necessarily has the potential to go like to continue because why would why would you continue this feud unless Miss will continue to basically bully you know, some kind of a um, push the Daniel Bryan's triggers and Daniel Bryan's will continue to set off uh, but I don't know I don't know so basically right now I am definitely putting my virtual money that not exist <laughs> on Maurice and Miz. Hopefully they're going to win because only that way I believe this feud will continue and only because of this. But of course if I'm not going to consider that I want Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella to win because they're good guys. But again right now we're thinking in terms of the longevity of the feud and because of the longevity of the feud I'm putting my money on the Miz and Maurice. Um, uh, and later I'm going to review my predictions uh, quicker because right now they could seem a little bit confusing. So uh, the next the next thing is Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton, which as believe I believe hopefully will stall the, sh the whole show, will steal the whole show, the whole show. Uh, because again, in terms of the Hell in a Cell matches, I believe this is going to be the one. Um, because Jeff Hardy is definitely going to demonstrate a lot of awesome stuff. Randy Orton usually works perfectly in every type of match, uh, so. Um, nothing bad to say about Randy. Um, again, he's my favorite legend. Um, currently present, that that is currently present to WWE and still fighting. Because of this, I believe that right here, um, again, it all depends. Um, no, there's no dependency. 100% Randy Orton has to win. Because once Randy Orton will win, uh, Jeff Hardy will transform because right now Jeff Hardy needs a transformation from the charismatic enigma to either brother Nero or the other pet character that he had I forgot how his name was so basically he definitely needs a switch in the character and the whole the whole reason for this feud is to basically push uh, Hardy to a to the limits and help Randy Orton to establish his new kind of type of personality. Um, so because of this, I definitely uh, believe Randy Orton is going to win right now. Um, although again, I'm definitely rooting for Jeff Hardy, but Randy Orton is going to win. 
So uh, next is Raw Women's Section, uh, Raw Women's Championship, Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss again. Alexa Bliss tried to hurt Ronda Rousey before the championship match, and there was a possibility that Alexa Bliss could win this match and get like uh, take back the title, which I believe something that needs to be done personally because Ronda Rousey with the title again they give her title super super early and not every person was kind of thrilled about it especially like um, hardcore fans I don't believe they are actually kind of fine with it I'm completely fine with it I'm not a hardcore fan uh, I'm just a pretty good fan I guess so and because of this uh, I believe Alexa, uh, Alexa Bliss needs to actually win the championship although it's kind of I don't know I believe yeah I definitely believe in Alexa Bliss, so hopefully Alexa Bliss is actually going to win. Because I don't believe that Ronda Rousey has to hold for her first championship for a longer period of time. Um, it's not going to work. She needs to go and feud with someone outside of the title picture and get a little bit more experience in the ring. And that way it's going to work better. So yeah. Kind of putting my money, virtual money, on that don't exist uh, on Alexa Bliss, and hopefully Alexa Bliss is going to win because again, it's it's going to be better for the women's division overall. Because if Ronda Rousey will continue to stay with the title, it might hurt the women's division alone in the long run. But at the same time, I don't know. It's kind of I have kind of mixed feelings about it. I'm still not sure because again, from one standpoint, if Ronda Rousey will stay on top she will get more opportunities for other women to basically you know, fight against her but because she's a freaking terminator none of them is going to be necessarily pushed so it's going to be pretty uh, kind of delicate balance and in order to maintain this balance um i believe you need to take title from her so yeah yeah i believe it's better for Ronda Rousey not to hold the title. Let's just give it Alexa Bliss. So yeah, rooting for Alexa Bliss. Um, so yeah, uh, the next one is SmackDown Women's Championship, Charlotte Flair versus Becky Lynch. Right here, uh, there's no doubt, I believe, that uh, Becky Lynch 100% is going to win this because this complete shift in attitude, the fact that now she's a heel, everyone loves her at this point as a heel, everyone wants for her to finally take what rightfully hers and I believe she definitely deserves it because again she was the first Smackdown Women's Championship and since then she's kind of became irrelevant unfortunately and uh, she got frustrated with it and now she's finally taking what she needs and she, what she wants and it actually makes for an awesome feud and this feud will continue by the way regardless uh, of who's going to win if Charlotte is going to win they will continue to feud if Becky is going to win they will continue to feud because of this multi-directional thing I actually not necessarily don't care who's going to win in terms of the storytelling, it will continue regardless, but Becky Lynch definitely needs to win because that way it's going to be something new on the Divas Division or on a women's division at this point on SmackDown because I believe SmackDown needs a different role model besides Charlotte. Um, and although Becky Lynch not necessarily a role model as a heel, but she definitely inspired a lot throughout the years and She's a pretty good actress, she plays an awesome heel and uh, she definitely became a crazy Becky Balboa uh, and hopefully she's going to kick ass. So yeah, um, so yeah, Becky Lynch. The next thing is WWE Championship uh, with AJ Styles against Samoa Joe. Uh, their feud is pretty crazy, I mean Samoa Joe is definitely pushing buttons of AJ Styles. He's in, He basically involved family into this matter, his daughter uh, the youngest probably, um, uh, his wife Wendy, and because of this, this feud is one of the best feuds on SmackDown, and uh, right now I believe Samoa Joe actually has to win, because if Samoa Joe is going to win, it's going to give Styles the exactly that Styles needs right now, I believe, in my opinion. Styles needs rest. He is super kind of beat up, I believe, uh, he pushing himself over the limits 
uh, with the fact that he's holding title for such a long period of time and it's not allowing him to basically not only to take time with his family which is I guess the portion of truth with this feud um, um, but actually relax and stay psychologically and physically healthy and because of this I believe he is pretty beat up he's never going to show it show this but he definitely needs this rest and I believe company needs to do this uh, company needs to take uh, the title from from basically AJ Styles give give it to Samoan Joe and give title Styles a rest uh, for a couple of months or maybe for probably certain period of months to basically give him some type of a uh, stress relief I don't know uh, but again we don't know what company wants we don't know if it's actually if, if actually AJ Styles needs it or not this is just my opinion and because of this uh, it could go both ways but I truly believe that Samoa Joe actually has to win the title and I'm going to uh, basically root for Samoa Joe because um, he definitely needs his first WWE title uh, and uh, although it's pretty I don't know it's hard to believe that he's going to win his first title that way and that kind of quick um, but he definitely is more than capable to hold the title and he becomes uh, when he feuds against Styles he he becomes a different type of aggressive person he is super intense and uh, uh, hopefully he's going to show this physically in a match because um, one thing is to show this on a microphone and if you in basically in, in interviews and in promos the other thing is to show this in a match and I am waiting for the old Samoa Joe to basically wake up and to take the to turn the roof off uh, with AJ Styles. This is going to be a pretty sick match, hopefully. Um, although we already saw their match and it was kind of fine, but not necessarily super, super awesome, but still cool. But this match definitely going to be a peak, I believe, and wherever this is going to go, we're going to see. But again, Samoa Joe definitely needs to win a title. The next is um, probably the last match to talk about is the WWE Universal Championship with Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman. We kind of already talked about it again. It all depends where a company wants th this feud to go. I put in my money on uh, basically Braun Strowman because I want for Braun Strowman to not f basically fail in cashing in the, the money in the bank first. The second uh, thing, I want this feud to continue in and put some pressure on the shield to basically take titles from them and not giving them titles. Because of this reason, I don't want uh, for Drew McIntyre and Ziggler to lose titles to Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Because again, I want this feud to continue. Uh, and again, it will continue regardless of that, no matter who's going to win the titles. But it all depends where the actual kind of storytelling is going to go. Because I truly believe that Dean Ambrose definitely has to feud against Seth Rollins and actually become a heel because there is something in his eyes that basically changed him throughout this injury time um, and uh, since uh, again as I said before Seth Rollins was probably a cause for Dean Ambrose, Dean, Ambrose, Dean Ambrose injury I believe they will create a the same awesome time as we saw on NXT when they fought each other because right now Seth Rollins on fire and Dean Ambrose kind of get back and he's completely changed his style and I believe he's going to be on fire as a heel and what they're going to show us one-on-one -on -one is going to be mind-blowing and I believe this is exactly the direction that WWE needs to go with and if they're not going to go with it I don't know it's going to be a waste of time because uh, so because of this reason I don't want for Drew McIntyre and Ziggler lose titles I want for Dean Ambrose to basically turn heel and go against Seth Rollins and everyone go will go their separate ways uh, uh, Roman Reigns will continue to feud with Braun Strowman either for, to get back uh, his title or to continue to defend it um, and McIntyre and Ziggler will continue to help other tag teams to basically um, elevate them uh, because Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler are perfect for tag team division because they're not necessarily super super top superstars um, and because of this they actually will give a lot of opportunities to other tag teams to stay relevant it's it's better it's going to be much better than to give tag team championships to Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins and put under them Ascension and other tag team championships that are not necessarily relevant that much yet uh, I don't believe that Ascension actually 
on Raw. Either way, Alters of Pain, AOP. Uh, it's not going to look fine if AOP is going to fight against Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, but I completely will buy if AOP are going to fight against uh, Drew McIntyre and um, Dolph Ziggler. So because of this, I believe they're going to win the titles. So again, let's just revisit again my basically choices. So again, in terms of the SmackDown Tag Team Championship, I'm uh, New Day against Trusive Day. I definitely believe that New Day will uh, will defend their championships. Um, and in Raw Tag Team Championship, Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Uh, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler, Dolph, 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 oh, come on, man. Dolph Ziggler will defend their titles again. Um, and um, Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella versus Miz and Maurice. Right, right here in order for this feud to continue, Miz and Maurice has to win. Have uh, so have to win because of this. I'm basically rooting for uh, the Miz and Maurice. Um, and Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton in Hell in a Cell, I believe Randy Orton has to win in order for Jeff Hardy to basically switch into the brother Nero or basically ch change his gimmick uh, into a little bit more intense Jeff Hardy. Because right now he's kind of down to earth and kind of... <laughs> although he's char has a charismatic enigma, but still he's kind of, I don't know, low energy. And I don't know, I would love him to be a little bit more energetic. Um, so yeah. Because of this, Randy Orton has to win. So, uh, Raw Women's Championship, um, Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss. I believe Alexa Bliss has to win in order for, again, give more opportunities to the women's division. Um, and basically send Ronda Rousey to fight outside of the title picture against whomever they want them to put against. Maybe Nia Jax will be back at some point and they will continue to feud outside of the title, title picture, who knows. So, uh, because again, I believe Ronda Rousey is a perfect example of the woman who don't need a championship in order to create an interesting feud. She's already a pretty big star and no matter against who you're going to put Ronda Rousey, it's going to create an interesting dynamic. You don't need to give her a title. So I believe it was necessary. So although I'm happy for her. So, um, yeah, Alexa Bliss is going to win in here. So, in terms of the SmackDown Women's Championship, I believe Becky Lynch definitely has to defeat Charlotte and dethrone her because I believe her, again, as we already talked about it, the attitude shift and the whole point of her being a heel and uh, taking back what she deserves and what she actually uh, started uh, the whole thing with SmackDown, basically, Championship, women's championship. She definitely needs to take this title back uh, where it belongs. And um, yeah, Becky Lynch definitely is going to win. And AJ Styles against Samoa Joe for the WWE Championship again. It all depends, but I definitely want for Samoa Joe to win um, and actually win the freaking title um, and give AJ Styles a little bit rest because he needs it. Um, and the next and the last thing is Roman Reigns against Braun Strowman. Again, hope for Braun Strowman to win in order for him to basically not to lose his cash in money, cash in money in bank. This is one of the main things. Uh, and although, again, I believe company kind of now trusts Roman Reigns in terms of t like. Um, putting the company on his, uh, on his shoulders and because of this he might not lose championship any soon uh, but again it could be a pretty interesting dynamic if actually Braun Strowman will take the title from Roman and then Roman will spend a couple of months to try to take this title back it will actually push Roman Reigns a little bit further it will put him against um, pretty interesting um, kind of I'm froze uh, so it, it, it just will give uh, Roman Reigns a, like a decent push, although he don't need a push, but still, I mean, he will he'll he will stay more lovable from the uh, others if he's not going to hold the title. 
uh, especially when Braun Strowman is going to win it. So yeah, these are kind of predictions. Again, uh, we are not going to see neither Shinsuke Nakamura, no Finn Balor, no Asuka, no Sasha Megs, no Bailey, no Kevin Owens, no Bobby Lashley, although I don't care about it still, no Elias uh, uh, in terms of the match and no other superstars. So because of this, there might be a possibility that, for instance, Kevin Owens and Bobby Lashley could fight on a pre-show, although I don't believe that they're going to fight on pre-show. But they actually could create the ma this match on pre-show. I believe at least one match on pre-show needs to be from 205 Live. Um, um, what else? Um, Sasha Banks and Bailey could actually fight with the tag team against someone either from Raw or from SmackDown. Um, I believe it could be a pretty interesting thing to see. Um, um, like combination of Raw and SmackDown. Um, women's tag, tag teams... Uh, one thing that I would want is the Iconics to fight against Asuka and Naomi, so it could be a possibility to uh, put them on the pre-show. But again, I don't know what type of plans they actually have in terms of Asuka and Kevin Owens. Because of this, I don't believe that they're actually going to put them on pre-show. Because once you are, you are fighting on the pre-show, it kind of demotes you psychologically, and because of it, uh, it might not be a good idea to put them uh, in this position. So because of this, I don't believe that we're going to see like big superstars on um, on the pre-show. Probably going to be a pretty kind of weird matches. Um, but still, again, we're going to know that later. So then, uh, I guess that's it for this portion of the thing. So we're not going to talk about Hell in a Cell anymore. Again, we quickly kind of briefly talked about the the fact how. Um, Potentially show could go uh, predictions are hopefully are going to become true uh, Again, I'm not that big on predictions uh, I'm usually pretty adaptable and although I am rooting for someone and want for some people to win but in most cases I'm completely fine regardless of Like the title change regardless of who's going to win exactly for me personally It doesn't matter because it still will produce a pretty interesting dynamic and it's still the story will still continue the next show so even um, Like all of my predictions are not going to come true. It doesn't matter because truly It doesn't matter. So I mean um, It could create an interesting story element so I could go and I could become a little bit more disappointed in some places and in some areas, uh, but in most cases I believe uh, it's kind of going to be fine. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is NXT. Uh, hopefully I will remember everything that we need to talk about NXT because uh, I unfortunately didn't prepare anything regardless NXT. Um, by the way, it would be a good idea to actually put my predictions... Um, yeah, let's just reveal out my predictions. I kind of want to put my predictions out there. So, again, Braun Strowman is going to win, Samoan Joe. Um, because I might forget them. Becky Lynch is going to win here. Okay, so... Alexa Bliss... Because depending on who's, who's going to win, um, depends where the story is going to go. By the way, this is probably the end of the recording, which is good, because we need to use right now the thing about Mayan Classic, etc. So yeah, let's just put our intellectual map in here, and basically now you're going to see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to go back into the creative side uh, and basically will quickly tell you what I did and what I struggled with and what not. So basically I will show you every step of the way and explain uh, the... It's funny thing, I'm choosing always the right side. Like here the right side, right side, right side, right side, right side, right side. No, right here this is going to be a left side. <laughs> this is fun. Um, and uh, for the SmackDown, we are going to see the new day, right side again. So yeah, hopefully this is going to be the case. So yeah, um, this is it for the predictions, let's just go and switch into the probably Mayan Classic and then we're going to talk about NXT, uh, although they actually kind of aired in a different uh, 
time first NXT, the second one uh, Mayan Classic, but I actually watched Mayan Classic first and then NXT. So let's just go into the regardless NXT thing. So and let's just quickly reveal uh, who was the winners of the thing. So mm, before um, Meiko Satomura and Tegan Knox uh, won, uh, we saw match with Mercedes Martinez against Ashley Rain and Mercedes Martinez won, that was main event. Uh, by the way, spoilers. <laughs> so, um, we saw um, this matchup, Casey Catanzaro. She's freaking sick. I mean, she is awesome. I definitely believe that she has a future in WWE. She is freaking sick. I mean, uh, she is probably the one who is the smallest one. She probably might be smaller than in height than Zelina Vega, uh, but still, she is super awesome. I mean, she's super athletic. Um, they tell they tell us that she was a uh, five seasons participant and the first women's winner on a some type of show, American television show. I forgot the name of the show. Uh, truly forgot it. It's actually doesn't matter. Um, so, but she's definitely a super cool. Um, and we're going to talk about those matches in a bit. So, who else? Who else fought tomorrow? T today? Uh, yesterday. So, this match was pretty interesting. I mean, uh, eventually, I didn't held favorites in here. I actually didn't know either of those and we revealed the fact that Ariel Monroe is actually Cedric's Alexander from 205 Life Live, which is pretty interesting and Cedric Alexander actually was present in, uh, on the show with with their daughter uh, and that was pretty cool. So, or with his daughter, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it might be a daughter from a different kind of time. So, okay, we created a floating topic. So, yeah, right here, and, uh, no, 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 Ariel Monroe actually didn't won, yep, Zooks, Zooks, Zooks is won, nope, and Ariel Monroe actually lost. Uh, Diana Peraza fought with Priscilla Kelly, as was expected, uh, Diana Peraza won, although I rooted for Priscilla Kelly, I kinda liked her actually, uh, she, she didn't necessarily show that much on the ring, because she didn't necessarily had time for it, this match was pretty short, uh, it was probably the first match of the main classic overall, and uh, again, this match could potentially create a pretty interesting and continuous t type of thing, by the way, Diana Peraza was uh, kind of present on NXT and uh, she probably going to feud with uh, Dakota Kai against uh, with Diana Perazzo in a tag team against um, I forgot the names we're going to talk about it though <laughs> um, so yeah these are all matches so four matches again we have a new winner in Diana Perazzo we have Zooks uh, we have uh, Casey Cutanzaro, and we have um, Mercedes Martinez. Right here, I actually wanted for Ashley Rain to win uh, for the like at the beginning, but after seeing her like on the ring, I actually kind of a little bit disappointed in her conditioning. She is she has pretty bad conditioning. I mean, when you look at her, she's pretty fit. She fits so well that you believe that she's going to create like awesome stuff on the ring, but she actually got super tired super quickly like truly super quickly and almost the whole match she was super slow and barely moved and it was pretty weird because when you look at like basically this type of fit person you would kind of think that this person has to go miles and miles in terms of the match but again it's not the case in reality and people could basically look awesome but their conditioning could be the worst ever and this is probably one of the cases she probably not necessarily wrestles that much because Renee Young kind of touched upon the topic that she almost gave up wrestling um, I mean uh, that she thought about not pursuing her dream not to continue to pursue her dream and basically go with the family and etc um, so yeah the same kind of goes for Mercedes Martinez though uh, she has like pretty big family I believe uh, and they said that she works two jobs, full-time jobs, and in addition to that, she wrestles. Um, this match was kind of the main event, but I wouldn't necessarily think about this match as the main event. 
uh, I would put on main event something different. But again, they're both two veterans, they're fighting for, for a lot of years, so like respect to them either way regardless. So that was pretty interesting kind of matchup. Um, well, of course, Mercedes Martinez dominated most of the match and uh, she actually showed her a little bit better than the previous one. I, I, left, I like her character, but I not necessarily like her in-ring abilities because she's kind of not necessarily fights in my favorite style. Because of this, I'm not necessarily kind of uh, favoring her in most cases, but her character is pretty cool. And she has awesome tattoos. Um, so, what, have, what else? So yeah, K K Casey and uh, Reina Gonzalez. Reina Gonzalez kind of super over-dominated because it was kind of a match David against Gol Goliath because Reina, Reina Gonzalez are pretty big. I mean, com in comparison to the Casey Catanzaro, which is, and she's she's super tiny. She's actually super tiny. I don't know. Uh, so because of her tininess, um, Reina Gonzalez was super big, and she dominated almost all the match. And that was actually a pretty awesome match. It was it was kind of a brutal one, and it has it had a lot of potential. Unfortunately, it didn't go so well in terms of the dynamic but still was pretty cool and in the end Reina Gonzalez was kind of super upset and she almost kind of attacked Casey but then she kind of eh, no I'm going to just hold you on on my shoulder and smile that was weird but still kind of thing um, yeah this match was kind of a surprise uh, again I didn't know what to expect from both of them I believe this match should won uh, Ariel Monroe although she's she seems like not experienced wrestler at all I don't know for how long she actually fight but she doesn't seem like an experienced wrestler um, she kind of um, I, I believe they tell us that she's a marine um, and uh, basically um, or at least she certainly served in an army and uh, she has the potential, but she still needs, I guess, a lot of experience. Uh, the Spanish life from the top rope was pretty sick. Uh, this is basically in the end, and ended the end, the match uh, in favor of Zeus, which was pretty awesome. Um, and this match again, I believe this match should be a main event. Uh, and although Priscilla Kelly is, they tell us that she's only 21. She's super young, and um, she definitely needs more experience. But she's actually pretty cool. I mean, I liked her character a lot, and uh, although she definitely reminds a little bit of Paige uh, visually, but um, she definitely could become a pretty interesting character in WWE. Hopefully, they're going to sign her at least in development, and she's going to show something interesting in the future because she definitely has potential. Uh, she has pretty interesting timing. I mean, uh, she's she's not she she doesn't suck at timing. So she actually can tell a pretty decent story. She held against Diana Perazzo pretty strongly and they actually they actually told a pretty decent story not the best one but pretty decent again I would rather see this one as a main event than anything else it started awesome it ended pretty cool and I would want for this match to to go basically for a longer period of time that's it so that's it kind of for me and classic again we just briefly went through it we have a lot of things to do so the next thing we're going to talk about is NXT um, in terms of the NXT, again, getting back to the Diana Perrazzo um, and basically Alia uh, with uh, Lacey Evans. So right now, I believe Alia and Lacey Evans are going to feud uh, together against Diana Perrazzo and Dakota Kai. We need to actually add Diana Perrazzo and an actual roster. Hopefully, the WWE uh, website is going to add her in an official roster, and as as long and as soon as it's going to happen, we're going to add her here. But Right now, she's not going to hear. Um, the cool thing about Shanna Baszler, she kind of fought against the uh, women with the name that I already forgot. Um, I didn't necessarily made a uh, notes, so because of this, I forgot. We didn't suck it, Lee. We saw Lars Sullivan against uh, Raul Mendoza, which was a weird thing. Again, Ra Lars Sullivan just basically throw uh, Raul Mendoza. Through, throughout the ring and on that match was ended basically in complete domination of the Lars Sullivan. His, by the way, actual name, I like it more, Dylan Miley, he, although he doesn't seem, it, this name doesn't seem super, super threatening, but it's still kind of better than Lars Sullivan. Although no, Lars, I believe he needs to call himself just Lars. At some point, WWE will probably go with this, with just Lars. 
because Lars is just Lars. It's kind of big. Um, who else? Oh, Cassiusono. Uh, again, I talked about Cassiusono in a previous thing. We talked about the fact that Cassiusono right now kind of struggling again. He goes with the same transition. He basically got signed as a um, um, kind of high uh, high expectation uh, or the the hot free agent, and unfortunately, he didn't live. That. And then. Um, he didn't put he, he did he didn't basically got pushed and he got pushed aside instead of it and he wanted to be pushed he got pushed aside so and because of that because of it unfortunately he kind of um, right now in a weird situation but there's actually slight suggestion that Kashisono might actually attack Alistair Black truly he might attack Alistair Black in order to get attention it would be actually awesome if they will if they actually will make this feud happen if Kashisano will fight against uh, Alistair Black is going to be freaking sick and if Kashisano will actually become a heel I, I believe that Kashisano definitely works better as a heel he doesn't look like a face and as a good guy he doesn't work he needs to become a brutal uh, person because he he actually looks brutally and this brutality doesn't show when he's super bubbly and fun and yeah and if he wants to succeed I believe he definitely needs to switch to the heel at least it doesn't mean that he needs to completely change his gimmick as I uh, suggested in a previous session uh, like become some closer to the road warriors uh, or to the raid uh, war raiders basically that type of gimmick uh, not necessarily 100% Road War Raiders, but again, he definitely would benefit from this type of shift. Um, and if this is not his in, in his psychology, and he not necessarily wants that, uh, he still needs to become a heel and become much more serious in his behavior. Become uh, like give us a little bit much more intimidating body language because one of the reasons why he's not working because of his body language it's just not intimidating but he is intimidating with his with his size and with his with uh, his abilities but it, it, it's all about per, like presenting and he's not presenting himself in a proper way in order to actually become a wwe superstar because wwe superstar needs to have this element of it factor and it factor it's not not nothing but the good way of presenting himself uh, or herself if superstar presenting them itself uh, themselves superstars presenting themselves in a proper way then they have an it factor for instance look at Marte montez ford he's pretty awesome in presentation he's probably better in presentation than in his wrestling skills but still he has this it factor because of this presentation Angelo Dawkins kind of a different story. He still has the presentation, but he kind of still lacks in, in, in presentation a little bit. And because of it, he, for such a long period in time in NXT still, and not necessarily pushed that much outside of the uh, tag team division. So, um, Danny Birch and Orny Lurkin got back, which is pretty cool. Um, so, apparently I missed and they had to go back not a week ago, but two weeks ago. So we got them uh, again I love their brutality and the, the out of both I love mo the most uh, basically Oni Larkin by the way Chris Gerard is much better name than Oni Larkin I don't know why he's not using his real name because Oni Larkin is oh, it's weird name Oni Larkin it I can't take him seriously with his name so hopefully he's actually going to redevelop his character a little bit and it's going to be named like a crazy crazy Wolverine or something like this because he's freaking crazy. I mean, ugh, he's awesome. Um, yeah, we got Sue so and Otis Dosovic against kind of a Champa thing. So uh, Champa was pretty like it was pretty interesting dynamic with Tucker Knight and basically Champa. Um, so we might see them fight in the future, which is also what if Dosovic is pretty awesome, has pretty sick charisma. Definitely believe that he's. He has a future such as Rhino. <laughs> Hopefully, they're going to use them, use him pretty well because he's awesome. And they actually have a machinery creates a pretty interesting dynamic too. In terms of Champa, uh, Champa finally entered with the music that was pretty sick. I mean, his music actually is pretty awesome. Um, uh, I tried to figure out the words of the music, and a couple of them I figured it out, but now I completely forgot them. Uh, so I, again, I didn't take notes. Unfortunately, didn't have time. 
so uh, yeah, and he actually uh, a freaking sick on a mic. I mean, before that, I knew that he can talk, but the way that he's right now speaking and talking to the audience, oh damn, he is freaking sick. I mean, he's definitely going to hold championship for a long time, and he's probably going to be the first who's going to go up in an actual WWE because he has everything that WWE needs. He has awesome skills, he ha he's awesome on the mic, he definitely looks like a person who could hold a freaking title and um, his brutal his I don't know he has pretty cool gimmick so I believe he definitely needs to go by the way um, Kari Sane got interrogated by William Regal in regards to the Keisha Sono and she kind of provided an alibi for him in terms of them like uh, the controversy who attacked uh, Aleister Black mm, and because of this I don't believe that Kairi Sane would lie because she's so freaking kind of good and angel-like uh, that I don't believe that you can hurt a lie from her. Um, it could be deceiving, by the way. Um, so because of this, kind of, uh, hopefully uh, the fact that she provided an alibi for Kesha Sono, it's actually not going to become relevant and Kesha Sono actually will attack Aleister Black and like will end up that he's actually attacked Aleister Black and then will give us a awesome feud again because I don't believe that Aleister Black right now works in a title picture against Champa or whatever although it's going to create a pretty awesome match too but again it's kind of weird Champa has different things to work with at this point um, Johnny Gargano and etc and Aleister Black kind of doesn't fit there and we don't know what like the extent of the Aleister Black uh, injury and if this injury is actually relevant or not or this is just a feud and they give him a, a kind of a free space and he got back home so who knows so yeah talking about Bianca Belair and Nikki Cross uh, that this match was pretty interesting mm, uh, they started awesome it was made by the way main event of NXT it was pretty cool Bianca Belair again I believe she is probably one of the most I don't know, potentially the biggest women superstar on, on the NXT roster at this point. Out of all of these women, uh, she has one of the most potential. Um, I mean, kind of the same for the Valentine Dream. Again, I'm putting them in, a dip, in, in the same category because they both don't have that much of experience in wrestling and they both are freaking sick. I mean, ugh, they definitely... If they're going to call up on an actual roster, they're going to completely de de deliver and maybe even over deliver. Uh, so, um, but again, they still kind of green, and I believe they still need to stay in NXT. Um, Shani Baszler is pretty cool, by the way. And by the way, talking about the Champa's music, I love music of Shani Baszler. Every time that Shani, Shani Baszler is entering the freaking arena, I am super pumped in terms of the energy. Damn. I mean, the music for Shana Baszler is freaking sick. Talking about CFO and the fact that they're creating an awesome music sometimes, and Shana Baszler's entrance music is one of those music. It's freaking sick. It's 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 super energetic, and I would want for everyone to have that type of energetic music. Um, the same kind of goes for Kevin Owens. Um, Champa has pretty decent music. We need to adjust to it still. Usually, you can't just like the music from the uh, get go, but still. Um, yeah, Ricochet kind of continues to feud against Pete Dunne. They're actually going to uh, fight uh, for the titles next week, uh, post Hell in a Cell stuff, which is pretty sick. Again, both of them are going to put their titles on the line, and some of them, one of them is going to win both North American, uh, not win, but held both North American and UK Championship, which is going to be sick. Um, hopefully, it will result in terms of by the way, let's just make a prediction because this prediction is actually going to be revealed next week. Uh, so because of this, I believe we need to make a prediction who's going to win. And I believe um, Pete Dunne has to win uh, and Pete Dunne has to take uh, his title, both the titles into the UK um, and in the NXT UK when they're actually going to start the show itself. So because NXT UK is pretty close, I believe, although it's coming soon and we still don't know the date, 
I believe Pete Dunne needs to help both titles and appear on the show and basically give a push to the show. Because if Pete Dunne is going to help uh, hold both titles, it's definitely going to give this show much more push. Um, yeah, we saw a couple of words from the Attitude Era. They said a couple of cool, cool stuff against uh, War Machine. Uh, I guess this is it. We kind of talked about everything in here. Yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Yeah, we, by the way, saw a um, for Forgotten Sons uh, kind of a interesting video. Uh, like the interesting vignettes uh, about um, Wesley Blake and Cutler and other yeah, I forget how his name um, so this is definitely an interesting gimmick I mean if like for me personally I don't know what exactly this gimmick is all about but they actually kind of telling uh, na na naming themselves Forgotten Sons because they got forgotten by um, the the NXT itself I mean, they didn't, they wasn't successful in their singles careers, and because of this, they're just pushed aside and, yeah, got forgotten. This is one thing. And the other thing, um, like, I, I kind of, um, I don't know, felt a little bit of vibe or uh, uh, hell, uh, felt a vibe from them in terms of perceiving them as a were like war war veterans and uh, that got forgotten by their country so this is one of the cool like if, if this is actually going to be the case it's going to perfectly work for America um, because uh, it's super patri pat patriotic and because uh, of it they actually might uh, get pushed a lot if they're actually if this gimmick is actually this if they are war veterans that wasn't that got basically forgotten by their country and they are trying to make their names uh, and basically kind of um, hold this together after the war. Uh, it could be an interesting kind of dynamic. Although they don't look like, definitely don't look like war veterans at this point. They're kind of rebels. But again, uh, it still could create an interesting dynamic. I guess this is kind of it. Um, yeah, we didn't saw SC3. Apparently, he's definitely injured because either way, we would see him. Um, the rest, ah, oh, yeah, we saw Cesar Bononi, uh, Cesar Bononi with a new Brazilian guy uh, with a black belt, so I forgot his name, fighting against uh, who? They fought with a tag team against someone, ah, oh, against Tony Larkin and Tony Burchell. Uh, that was pretty interesting, so that was just, just it. That's kind of it. So yeah, that's kind of it. This is the only thing that I remember from the show. Apparently, uh, this is everything that I wanted to talk about. Uh, the rest we're going to talk about later. So yeah, that's it. We don't need this anymore. Um, I guess let's just close this. We're not going to talk about WWE today. Uh, yeah, I guess we covered everything that we wanted to. Uh, again, uh, we are getting closer to the pay-per-view. Hell and Cell is going to be next uh, this week, uh, and it's definitely going to be an interesting one because um, hopefully my predictions are going to come true, and we will continue to. And again, predictions are not going to give us every information possible. Predictions just give us a some type of a direction. They're not necessarily going to give us 100% answer um, towards um, what's going to happen next. Uh, it all depends. Uh, Every time after prediction is revealed and after we are either won the prediction or not, uh, now it all depends. The game will continue. We still need to predict well where this the, the the feud will continue, if the feud continues or not. Because of this, for me personally, uh, I'm not necessarily a big fan of pay-per-views. For me, pay-per-views are kind of a I don't know. It's kind of a transitional point. But most of the things I like about WWE are the shows, the actual shows. Um, and don't get me wrong, pay-per-views could become a pretty interesting thing. But in most cases, personally, for me, pay-per-views are not something that I am super pumped out about usually. I mean, unless these pay-per-views give us a super awesome uh, and unique matches such as Hell in Cell or kind of Royal Rumble or Money in the Bank or whatever. Uh, so 
if pay-per-view is just a regular pay-per-view, it not necessarily gives us anything and just regular matches, usually matches on the pay-per-view are not uh, held up to up to the standard of the actual matches on uh, basic shows because sometimes Raw and, uh, and SmackDown actually g give us much more, much better matches than the actual pay-per-views. And in terms of the quality, in terms of the storytelling, of course the actual show have those and unfortunately pay-per-views not necessarily have the storytelling element it's like it's like just a resolution of the story and that's it and because of this for me personally pay-per-view it's not something that i necessarily like that much uh, uh i love the regular shows because for me i'm seeking in wwe the overall storytelling and although pay-per-views for me it's kind of either a comma or basically uh some type of uh I forgot the word. So it's kind of some type of a transition inside. So either the storytelling will, storytelling will continues or it's going to stop. And based on that, I'm basically using uh, pay-per-views as this type of element of storytelling. For me personally, it's not necessarily kind of... Um, so it just gives us a context or an, I don't know, or to the possible of an, and potential direction and that's it. Uh, it's it's weird, but still. Oh snap! I'm going to sneeze again. <laughs> Hopefully not. So yeah, this is it about WWE. So let's just go and talk about the things that I did throughout the uh, basically pre-recorded thing. So we didn't finish with the ear. Yeah, we definitely will continue to work with the ear. And I guess while I'm going to work on this, I'm actually going to work with the ear. Uh, I believe I completely will be able to talk and work on the ear. Uh, so, uh, nose is not final, it, it's not necessarily a nose of the CM Punk, we just created a basic nose uh, for us in order to basically look at it and see the actual character and mm, something closer, because again, without the nose it's not necessarily working. And the reason why nose looks pretty weird and pretty big, because don't forget that we're going to put another layer in here. So there's going to be a, the whole layer of lips and it's probably going to start from here and it's going to go down and it's going to create a pretty big thickness so um, so the jaw is actually going to add in the volume uh, and because jaw will add in the volume uh, we didn't finish with it and because of this we need to put an, and basically create a nose a little bit different we also still didn't establish the skin for the nose itself so this is just a kind of I forgot how this thing called mm, it's not the bone yeah. In Russian it's called Hryash. <laughs> Hryash. In English it's called cartilage. Yep, cartilage. So basically, this is not the actual muscle, this is a cartilage. The same goes for the ear. Uh, ear has a cartilage in here, and uh, the rest is not a cartilage, the rest is just the fat. So because of this, uh, we are trying to work with kind of this thing. So yeah, I will continue to work with, any, with ear. Uh, let me kind of re-prepare my references to make them show. Um, I have a lot of references, so I have a reference of the CM Punk uh, in order to basically try to take his actual uh, features, because it wouldn't be a wise to think to sculpt the actual ear uh, from a for instance, anatomical reference, and then try to shape this actual ear into the CM Punk's ear, because every ear has a different footprint, ear print. <laughs> so every ear actually has a completely different print, and um, every ear is completely unique for each person. The same goes for the nose, although, like, manipulating nose would be much easier, of course, because of this we kind of created the base for the nose. But again, um, so, again, let's just um, so, one of the things that I did is, I, as I said before, I separated those things from each other. So, uh, what we have now, right now, is we have a separate skeleton that works with muscles only. We have nose, we have skull, we have ears, and we have neck base. Uh, neck base is exactly the thing that basically works with the structural engineering dependency. It's It has like a... For now it has low structural engineering dependency, but in the end we're actually going to make it a mid in 
structural engineering dependency because we need to create a lot of elements in here, connect them together. So NEC actually is going to add an additional primitive that's going to appear in here. Um, and this primitive are not going to are going to connect these together. It's probably going to be a sphere, so there's a good possibility that we're going to put a sphere in here, and the sphere is just going to take place uh, under the jaw. It will create this kind of an element of transition for the neck. Um, yeah, but again, we're not going to work on neck, I guess, today. We're probably going to work on it um, later. So yeah, go. Um, so in terms of the things about the year, again, uh, when it comes down to the year, you can't learn how to draw the year necessarily on painted year. I mean, every year is completely different, uh, and although I learned how to draw a year and I can draw a year from my mind uh, without using a reference, uh, I can draw a regular year. I know that we have a U shape in here or Y shape in here. Yes. And most of the, I know that right here we have a cartilage, and right here I know that we have some type of a fat tissue. I also know how ear looks from behind. I know that look like the ear has this element of cylindrical element that basically bulges a little bit, and then it kind of goes there. But again, each ear completely has a different structure, and each ear you need to draw. Mm, kind of from the get-go and by the way ear is not necessarily one of the most pretty parts of the human body and human face I mean ears are kind of usually looking pretty weird and I know that there are people that actually don't like ears at all and they getting weird by weird out by ears uh, because they have a pretty weird structure you can't explain them necessarily why they're looking a certain way or not they don't tell necessarily a character unless you're an elf. <laughs> so, again, I don't know, this is a personal thing. So yeah, let's just go. Um, so yeah, again, I separated two uh, skulls from each other, I created one base skull, and we have an actual skull that we're actually going to paint over. And I made sure that we're going to work with the transparency and everything that it's not going to work, uh, that it's not going to be chosen, is going to go become ghost out. What it means basically, uh, when we're going to work with muscles, um, we're going to take the size, and if... Oh, wait a minute. What's happening? Oh, apparently we have a mask. Yep. Um, if we're going to work with a certain size, uh, yeah, for instance, when we're going to draw muscles on top of it, so for instance, we're going to do this. Yeah, we're going to, for instance, create... Okay, we have a muscle, muscle in here. So, let's just build a muscle in here. We have a muscle in here. Uh, so, when we're going to build those muscles uh, on top of each other and uh, we're going to basically make them work like this, um, this is the actual way how we're going to create muscles, so nothing fancy. Um, we need to keep uh, a track of all these things because uh, in case we're going to, for some reason, do something Let's just go back. Yeah, in case we're going to do something like this, push form inside, we need to know that we're still maintaining the structure of the skull. And this uh, basically ghost is going to tell us that we're still working, like th that we're still working with it properly. So, for instance, right now. But no, we kind of lost the jaw. In order for not to lose uh, the jaw and actually keep the structure of the skull the same, we need to do exactly that, duplicate this thing and use it. By the way, let's rename it into the actual muscles because we actually created like multiple copies of the muscles because we put nose from the muscles and etc. So again, when you see this ghost, it just means that uh, the rest is unchosen and uh, the thing that we're working with is chosen in order for us to basically know what type of object and subject we're working with and the rest kind of goes on the background not to distract us especially if we don't want to be distracted so yeah let's just uh, work on ears and work on ears separately in the ghost mode because it actually uh, shows us the ear from the in in their part um, another problem another problem that you basically saw is the fact that we kind of tried to work with the backtrack thing once we started to work on the ears because ears are 
like one big object and every time that we try to push things there or there they kind of went inside and didn't necessarily work on top of each other uh, for this you have to um, enable backtrack mode that way it's going to ignore everything that's on the back and basically build up the things on top but for some reason it didn't work for this year I don't know why truly uh, maybe because we're working with the symmetry maybe I don't know why so for some reason it didn't work and because of this we uh, we had to create a separate cylinder for it and basically placed it and then combined it together in the Dynamesh um, another thing uh, that will allow us to uh, combine things is uh, basically group masking. If we actually connected both pieces together, we need to regroup them as one and basically Dynamesh them again in order for them to com like connect in a little bit better. We kind of had the same problem for the nose. Uh, first these objects were separated, then we grouped them in one object, we applied Dynamesh and then it got connected together. The cylinder was connected with the sphere. Then we just shaped the nose. So yeah, hopefully today throughout the like till the, the end of the session we finish we will finish with the ear and maybe we will start to work on uh, the neck. I don't know. Uh, we're definitely not going to start to work on muscles today because it's it's again I showed you how I'm going to work with muscles. It's it's actually going to be as easy as that. We're just going to build up uh, up on it, on top of it, um, and we definitely going to do this much more accurately. We're going to actually work with placement of actual muscles, where exactly they're placed, where they're connected. For that, we need to analyze where actual muscles are usually connected, how big is orbital socket, um, I mean the orbital muscles, uh, their orbitic orbiculus oris uh, muscle. Um, how exactly eyes are deep inside or we need to push them a little bit out it all depends on the when we start to build the muscle structure it will start to change so there's a lot of things that are going to be made so yeah um, yeah some of the muscles are actually going to be uh, under the skull so for instance if we're going to look at this uh, this muscle which is again kind of muscle that allows us to chew um, with combination with this muscle it basically kind of goes under this portion of the bone of the cheekbone of the side portion of the cheekbone and it basically attaches in here so we don't have a hole in here because we sculpted it from one object um, but still um, like this muscle is going to give us this thickness for the head because right now it's pretty kind of skinny. The same goes for this. Um, there's going to be some portion of fat in here added um, because there's complete emptiness in here. But again, don't forget that the place uh, uh, like right here is pretty empty. Um, not necessarily 100% empty, but still. There's a little bit of emptiness in there because there's a fat. Fat, 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 fat. So, yeah, let's just start to work or continue to work with the ears because um, the thing about the ears, though, um, in order to make them right, you need to um, figure out their basic structure, understand how ears are usually working. And the second thing is, oops, and the second thing is, um, uh, try to use the reference of the exact type of ear that you want to draw. But again, when we talk about ears, there's a lot of like separations we need to completely re re revisit them from multiple angles again ears are one of the most complex stuff to uh, work with because they don't have the element of controlling them they kind of a little bit random and because there is red because th there is a pattern again we we constantly see in some type of this uh, y shape and y shape is definitely present so this y element but this y is completely different like depending on the person for instance CM Punk not necessarily has this y shaped uh, in a proper way it actually has kind of a weird thing in here in terms of the y mm, it's kind of down so what I'm doing right now is just trying to look at the CM Punk's ear and try to make the ear look exactly like CM Punk's ear Um, exactly towards the end of this bone uh, there's actually an ear canal 
uh, basically that enters the skull inside we have our eardrums again every person has a different type of depth of the ear every type of structure uh, any any type of structure of the ear so because of this it's not necessarily going to look maybe super super realistic um, but again and also remember that we're working with a pretty low polygon count uh, we have like five counts on, on the ear it's pretty small um, and we're, we're not going to up this higher than five polygon counts I don't believe that we need that uh, once we will go into the detailing stage of course then we're going to do this right now the main thing for us is to create a basic shape of the steampunk's ear we're not going to work on details again this is not the detailing stage it could be a good idea to uh, exit sometimes a uh, perspective mode in order to shape an ear uh, but the problem with and like exiting uh, perspective mode is in the fact that you usually the references that you're working with are shot with the perspective and because of it if you work on things outside of the perspective and try to make them look like in perspective once you will put this thing in perspective it's going to look weird so because of this i believe we need to work with the perspective and turn it on and try to make an ear the right way Sometimes we're going to Dynamash, so every time that I'm doing this, like uh, control dragging the mask, uh, hopefully it's it's an actual control. Yeah, right here I believe control. We have Alt and Shift in here. So yeah, I'm dragging the basically control drag, and it kind of uh, outside, and it basically reapplies Dynamash sometimes with that but with this of course we're going to lose some details so we need to make sure that we put enough information not to lose it damp standard so don't forget that we're working with the, with the symmetry both eyes are kind of yeah steampunk has pretty weird ear i mean by weird i don't mean super weird but it's not the usual ear has pretty interesting connections that I didn't necessarily saw before because every person uh, like by the way one of the things uh, that kind of seems weird but still while I'm doing this uh, I, I could talk about it like it works with ears the same kind of goes for uh, actual navel navel I mean the thing that's on your belly <laughs> the navel um, some people are got weirded, weirded out by certain navels uh, ne ne Neville's, but not the wrestler Neville, 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 Navel. So, the reason why I guess is because we the same kind of goes with the ears. We getting accustomed to our personal ears and how our our ears are looking, and we seeing those ears as a normal ones. And when we see a different type of ear and on a person, and it's not necessarily it looks like our ear, we feel like this weird ear is super weird and it's not like normal. But ideally, every person has its own personal, his or her personal normal, and um, there is a basic pattern in each ear, of course, as we said already. Um, yeah. Sometimes, by the way, I'm uh, having troubles with uh, muscle memory because um, ZBrush shortcuts and of course my painting shortcuts that I'm using in Krita are completely different. And because of this, there's a lot of time that I'm basically mis mistaking buttons and doing and trying to do certain uh, action and I'm failing in it with it. So when these things are happening hmm. so this thing is actually has to be of course bigger again it's all about observing so you look at Simbang here you observe it you try to analyze it you try to make it as kind of close as possible to the actual ear and it's all about working with reference again uh, because when it comes down to working with portraits we need to understand that we can't work with portraits 
without analyzing a reference. The portraits are all about references. Yes, yeah, Zinbank has pretty weird thing in here. It's pretty deep. The overall structure of the ear is pretty bad, by the way. I mean, it definitely doesn't look right. Um, but again, it's all about subtleties, and for now it's the, the base thing, we need to kind of establish the peaks and valleys of his ear, and only then we will start to make them proportionally right. So right now it looks weird and completely not right, but once we will put them together, uh, once we will establish them, we will start to work on their... So, Simpunk has kind of a double Y, I don't know, it's weird. It has like three branches, so this one Y, and this is the other Y, it's like somewhat a W thing, and one W basically extends into the Y, and this Y continues and goes there, and it's completely interconnected, which is again, not every person has this. I know that some people could read uh, uh, personalities by ears, which I don't know is actually true or not. Because the ears are, although they're different. Again, right now it looks pretty bad. But again, it's all about subtleties. We will get there. It's all about subtleties. Um, again, today we're probably going to finish with uh, with only ear. Again, till the end of the session, about 15 minutes left, uh, and uh, we need to make sure that the ear is going to be at least like put in the proper way. I guess I guess we made super big hole here in the ear inside of the ear. <laughs> we need to make it smaller. So I'll just pull it out. It's deep. Dum 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 dum. So yeah, we could kind of work a little bit with the overall shape. Um, Zimpunk has kind of a, not necessarily a round-ish ear, it has a little bit of angle to it. Also, one of the reasons why the, uh, the ear is going to look right now pretty weird, because right now it's not connected to the actual skin. So if we're actually going to get rid of the ghost mode, uh, it's connected to the skull itself and uh, usually it's connected with the skin and uh, until we're going to connect this ear to the skin it's not going to look right only after we'll connect it to the skin it's going to look as a whole so right now we can't basically combine ear with the skull because they're separate um, and only on the stage of working with muscles and with this uh, after we're finished with muscles and we will go into the skin stage uh, and we're going to put on top of the skin, uh, on top of the muscle skin. Only then we will be able to connect this ear uh, to the simpunk. But again, from far it kind of looks pretty decent. Uh, still weird, but fine. It needs some adjustments, of course, and in terms of the proportions, because it's all about proportions in here. But still, from far it kind of looks fine. Um, although we need to work on it. Um, because of this like it's going to be pretty hard to work with this area because this area ideally needs to be connected to the skin and since we don't have a layer of muscles in here and layer of skin it just seems super weird Steampunk has pretty um, kind of flipped out ears. I don't know how to properly say it. So again, when we're talking with when we're working with the ears, we need to uh, analyze them from each side. And the problem is we don't have any photos of Steampunk from the back, so we don't know necessarily how he looks, how his uh, how um, his ear uh, his uh, ear looks from the back but most of the ears in the back looks look alike so we're not going to try to come up with crazy things
again, one thing that you need to establish this Y shape. We're definitely always going to have some type of a hole in here, which again is going to tell us the And it's all about connecting different type of tissues because here actually has a lot of multiple retransitions. It kind of transitions from one place that it transitions in another place. There's a lot of things that go on top of the other things. So the ear again, I believe is one of the most complex things because again, it has so many elements interconnected and go inside of like on top of each other. So for instance, this part, ideally this part, it goes here and then it goes down and it needs to be much much like kind of separated a little bit and this separation is pretty important so it's like this part of the ear it's almost separated from the bottom part of, now, of course you need to establish it hopefully you're not annoyed by multiple rotations by the way I need to see if rotation is actually lagging or not <gasps> oh snap rotation is lagging I completely forgot to change the configuration sorry about that um, hopefully it wasn't super glitchy so we need to go into the performance I need to put a maximum threads to two instead of four that way this is basically because of the multi draw function this multi draw function function uh, with four threads creates lags um, yeah, you notice it closer to the end of the session. Thanks. <laughs> this is the downside of not having uh, viewers to tell you what's wrong with the stream. But again, hopefully with time. Um, I will continue to do this regardless because I'm mostly doing this for myself. And if I'm going to find like-minded people by doing so, I'm going to be super happy. So again, um, the thing that it's on in here on the bottom. Um, it basically tells us study what you have passion for and uh, I truly have basically passion for wrestling and because I have passion for it why wouldn't I study it like this is the perfect way for me because most of these years I, I didn't necessarily know um, for me personally my brain kind of was um, constantly against studying I didn't perceive studying as something... I, I knew that study studying is something that I have to do. It was kind of not a question. 100% I knew that yes, I have to study. As every artist, I need to study. If I'm not going to study, I'm not going to grow. I completely knew it and understand it. It was not the problem. But the, but the problem was in the fact uh, how I used studying and how I perceived studying. Um, the way of studying, I would say, uh, I perceived studying in a pretty different way, or in a pretty in a pretty weird way. I looked at studying as something kind of that not necessarily um, like I would waste time by like studying. I don't know. Um, I guess it all it, it was all connected with the efficiency element. Uh, I wanted to study efficiently and I wasn't necessarily able to study efficiently 100% of the time. And because of this I kind of was disregarded studying for some reason. We need to find a reference from CM Punk from the side view. Um, yeah, let's go and put in search CM Punk. We need more information because two references for the CM Punk is just not, not enough. I need to see his uh, ears uh, from multiple kind of views. Mm -hmm. Because he has this weird area in here which makes it kind of bulgy. And I need to figure out where this transition is going. Either it actually goes there because I don't believe so, it, it just looks weird. Might be the case though. But again, it's 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 hard to say what's weird for the year, what's not weird for the year, because all all ears are freaking weird. 
In terms of the thickness, by the way, I believe, yeah, uh, one of the pro pro problems with proportions, one of the reasons why this year doesn't look right is because this portion needs to be smaller. This portion of the year needs to be smaller. So I'll just push it a little bit inside. And then it goes, it got basically bigger with, again, it's all about the dynamic. And again, it goes a little bit Creative process is usually pretty hard to do something during the creative process in terms of like talking and at the same time while you are doing th things. It's not easy. I'll just smooth a bit. Although it's probably not the good, not the best idea, but smooth this one more. One of the ways, by the way, to work with edges. Most of the beginning sculptors they not necessarily understand this how to work with it, but one of the like how like uh, we need to learn how to work with edges as sculptors and as painters and uh, all edges are created by basically maintaining the eight ed edges so for instance if we want to keep those edges together we need to work in inside those edges not basically smooth them out most of the basic problems of the sculpting when people are starting to sculpt they constantly smoothing out the edges they not necessarily keeping those intact and because of this they kind of put down details and then they're smudging them or basically smoothing them and this is not something that you need to do it's not perfect by the way in terms of me going through the references I'm not going to be able to see the chat what what Enzo and Mora doing here <laughs> closer to the photos so the punk it's weird Okay. Oh, by the way, one of the team box here is already pretty bad because of the UFC. So we're not going to work with his bad ear. We're going to work with this normal ear. His bad ear is pretty banged up. Actually, his ear, like from one photo, looks pretty normal to me, and another photo, it looks it looks weird. But on another photo, it's kind of fine. So again, the basic structure of the ear is always the same because uh, it's it's designed the uh, this way in order to work with the hearing. This design it's kind of created specifically by nature to, for us to hear sounds from every type of direction. Each of these things kind of redirects the sound from different part of the room or the environment. Yeah, we're pretty close to the end. Uh, I'm not going to extend the session. Don't see the post, the, the point in it. Uh, if if I'm not if I'm going to continue to struggle with ear, it's probably because we need to push it like to the detailing stage, and solve the rest of the problems in detailing stage. Um, and it might be the case at this point because I believe it could be the problem why I'm struggling with it. Of course, I will try to make it right. Uh, but I believe one of the reasons why I'm struggling is because of this. Uh, okay, this part is actually pretty thick. Unfortunately, Simpunk Seer is actually much smaller. I made it super, super kind of wide. It's actually smaller. Because of this, we're having troubles with the overall areas. Just push it a little bit closer then. And it's 
definitely not uniformed. I mean, definitely has some curvatures that we need to 100% establish. Okay, so, okay, one of the things that I noticed is the way that this thing works. It's tilted. So one of the things that we didn't establish necessarily. Oh yeah, it actually starts to look a little bit better. Again, it's all about subtleties. Those who stay patient will achieve greatness <laughs> in sculpting freaking ear <laughs> which is the most life uh, depending thing ever if you're not going to learn how to sculpt ear you're not going to survive in the real world hopefully you get the sarcasm and you're not Sheldon Cooper who doesn't read sarcasm yeah, we're kind of getting closer to how actually he, he, his ear looks like. Okay. We need to zoom, zoom this thing out, it's super far. Oh, we actually... Did you know that we able to zoom... In... Um... Even websites. Okay, we, okay, okay, okay. Oh, I started to figure it out. So, if this thing is pushed, the same curvature kind of. You can see the the similar curvature in here too. It's pushed a little bit. Again, it's all about subtleties. Okay, this thing is actually kind of relatively big and it goes there we need to make it smaller it still works weird no, it still looks weird from the side though like from the front view from the side it works it looks fine but this is the problem of sculpting, we need to work on multiple dimensions, not just with one, because if I would draw this ear, I would draw it exactly in this way. But since I need to work on multiple directions, now we need to push things from the side too, uh, on from the front, and it's definitely not working from the front. Okay, let's just find another front picture for the ear of the CM Punks. For the CM Punks ear. There's not that many views of the same point from the front. Okay, this kind of looks like a front view. It's probably from WWE. From the old days. It's kind of a little bit rotated though. Okay, so this thing is not necessarily that out, it's actually inside. So some people are having this type of thing outside of their the bottom part of the ear. But Tim Punks is not the case, he actually has those things inside. So, and once we will push them inside, it actually will make the ear weirder. And because of this, it's better to work with the outside thing. And we need to approach it the right way. It's going to ship things. But again, we're going to rework, rework the things that were changed with it. Now we need to push this one a little bit inside now. Inside now.
Okay, go back to the side of you again. You kind of messed up a little bit in here. He has a little bit more rounded uh, ear in here. And the same way we actually going to work with the actual face. I mean, the same way as we're trying to make ear look exactly like St. Buck's ear, the same way we're going to work with the references. Just look at them. If we don't have enough information, search for the uh, additional reference and try to make things better. Um, exactly that. So nothing much. Sculpting is actually easier than drawing um, because it's much more intuitive. Because you're already working with the 3D form, you don't need to make this form. Um, okay, we definitely have much, much. Okay, this thing actually, it's. A little bit down and then actually goes here and, and there is a gap in here so let's just create this gap it's actually it appears much deeper than this which probably not something that we'll be able to achieve so we don't have enough pixels I guess right now we're starting to struggle with the pixelization. We don't have enough pixels to work with with the inner part of the ear here. And everything that we're going to do is just not going to produce proper results for that reason. Yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, uh, let's just finish establishing the basic um, proportions of the ear and we almost kind of close to finishing it with it and once basic proportions for the year are established we can call it done for this part so yeah this part what well, this part is actually going to connect with the skin so right now it seems like separated and not necessarily in place but it's actually the the, the, the thing that is going to connect with the skin mm -hmm. Yep, so this thing will go, will connect with the skin. Okay, just use more brush. Let's move this portion a bit in here. We want to suggest this curvature here and here. This thing actually pushes closer there. So there's these things inside, which creates this depth. And the same goes there. By the way, it kind of explains the position of this thing. Yeah, we're almost done with the year. Um, the rest of the things we're going to achieve with detailization because ideally we need to push this thing a little bit. We need to connect it with he with this, um, and we don't have details to do that as you can see. Like everything that we're doing is just going to make these things weirder. So, for instance, this thing again has this element of separation this thing connected and goes down and again we're losing details each time that we're reapplying the mesh, which is completely fine as long as we're working with the proper things So yeah, this thing goes from the inside, in here, and in here. This, 
This thing is not that deep as it appears. So we might push it a little bit from. Creating illusions. Artists are virtually illusionists. They need to create an illusion of reality, not from reality. Which is usually not something that is easy. Yeah, the rest of the things we are going to deal with the on the utilization stage because right now I don't believe that we have enough things to enough pixelization in order to work with it. There's still a lot of things to do though. We still need to make this ear work fine. Like for instance, this thing definitely needs to be smoothened a little bit. From the side here, actually, much smoother from the top. And then, of course, it goes in depth in here. But again, you see, we don't have enough pixelizations to work with this thing. Okay, so I guess that's kind of it for this ear. I'm going to go through its proportions a little bit later maybe, because some of the things I'm not seeing already, because our blind begins to become kind of blind to certain changes the more you work on one subject. Might be the case. I could start to lose this element of dynamic. Still need to work on the ear, how it looks from the different angles. Because again, right now it appears completely not right, but... In the front. But it actually has pretty uniform transition, there's not that many changes in angles. exactly how this, look, how this here looks. Again, um, in order to create the same kind of a ridge or I don't know thing in here, we need more depth and details. Right now we don't have enough polygons, so we're going to work on this part of the ear, which will make it a little bit more realistic because this part of the ear is kind of almost done. I mean, of course we need more details to make this thing right, but in most cases this ear is pretty decent. Uh, it don't need any kind of base information. Again, we're working with stages, or on passes, and this is kind of our second pass. So the first pass is just to create a basic shape, um, then try to uh, shape this form closer to the ear, uh, on the, on basically, and then go through the trying to make on this stage with these type of details as much realistic look as possible, uh, as closer as possible. And the rest is going to be done on detailing stage. We're going to make this thing a little bit better uh, on the next stage, on the next pass. But again, it's we're not going to probably touch ear up until the ending, uh, the end part, because I truly don't, I, I truly don't believe that we need to touch in here. Again, depth in here we can't create it because of the lack of details. We need to up resolution from four polygons. Of course, I try to create this kind of suggestion that this thing is going here. But again, it kind of works. 
So yeah, we're going to keep the ear that way. It's it works fine. Um, just cool. Um, so yeah, I guess we're going to finish on that note slowly because again, we're already past 15 minutes. Um, so today's session was kind of cool. I mean, this is the first time that I actually kind of did something throughout the stream. Um, uh, we started with the first stream when I basically created a skull base, but that was not like hard um, at all. Uh, this is much more complex because right here we're actually working with the actual reference and we need to pay attention to references. We need to kind of think about a lot of multiple stuff right away and it's not easy task to do. So this is kind of the thing. Uh, the last thing that we're probably going to do, we're probably going to add the sphere that I wanted to add just to make it a little bit more coherent because um, right now it seems like there's a gap in here that we need to put like put something in. So the last thing yeah, that we're going to do, we're actually going to add a, again, a high primitive since we not necessarily did this. So again, putting in the Amman primitives, choosing one of the spheres, it actually doesn't matter what type of sphere you're going to create, we're going to completely change its resolution. So let's just go with the pretty detailed sphere. Um, and then we need to go into the draw mode. It's already in the draw mode. Choose a subject. I can get rid of this. And try to draw the sphere. I believe the sphere is going to be something like this. Um, it's uh, one of the things that I want to make sure. Like uh, I, I, I'm not sure how to do this, but how to make this primitive appear in the right directions. Because one of the problems that I have with it is the fact that it's it's appearing in the wrong direction. It kind of makes me kind of. And easy. <laughs> so yeah, this thing is basically going to be in here, and it's going to like work as a element that will connect the neck with the jaw. Um, the steampunk doesn't necessarily have this big of a kind of fat in here. He's pretty skinny, especially right now. Um, Although, I don't know, we'll, we'll, by the way, I don't know what type of version of the same bond we're going to create, either from old WWE days, when he was a little bit more, kind of... He, he always, by the way, was pretty skinny. There was a time when he was, kind of, a little bit... with a little bit of weight. I guess we could keep this thing in here, for now, that way. Ideally, we need to connect this part with this part, which I will probably do. So, um, so we actually added uh, this sphere on a different type of subtool. Uh, we're working with the ears right now, so in order to make it uh, separated from ear, we need to go into split and basically split unmasked points. Right now these are unmasked, we're splitting them, now they're separated in a different subtool, and now we need to merge basically this part with the neck base, which is exactly the thing that we're going to do. Um, probably need to do the opposite in order to keep the name. I don't know what exactly thing will inherit the name, but hopefully the neck base will, will inherit the name. Uh, then we'll go into merge, and merge down which will merge two things together. Yes, it's an undoable operation. Yep. Yeah, in order to maintain the name, it needs to stay on top. Uh, Krita does a different thing. If you merge a level on top with with a weird name with the level on the bottom, the, la the layer on the bottom inherits the name. So because of this, ZBrush has a little bit different policy, I guess. Algorithm of working with inheriting names. So yeah, that's kind of it. So, and now they are completely separate as a pulley groups of course we could kind of put them in a dynamesh what and it will still connect them but it's better to basically group mask them and to make them one big shape um, and kind of make a little bit of a probably tr much more better transition let's just uh, create a smooth transition between both of them 
uh, okay, we forgot to enable the symmetry. For each stop tool, you have to enable the symmetry separately. It's not going to enable symmetry automatically. And of course, we. Oh no. Mirror and weld. Unfortunately, pressed. We could actually smooth the whole neck. Why not? We're still going to rework it. Um, we could put like a couple of more shapes and it comes down to the neck uh, to connect them. It's kind of making this base shape look a little bit closer to what we need. Um, why not? Oh, snap. Yeah, right now we're not necessarily working with muscles again. Right now we're kind of faking them, as I said before. Uh, we don't need to work on muscles at this particular point. We took, muscles are going to go a little bit later. Right now our main goal is to just put those things in place. And although everything in here is not going to look right, it's going to look pretty bad. It's going to be enough as a base. Again, this portion doesn't need... This is, by the way, the first time that I'm doing this, so I truly working on kind of... on improvisation. Hopefully it's going to work, though. Um, then we're going to kind of have a connecting tissue of the... Yeah. Then this thing is going to connect with the jaw. I don't know the actual extent of connection, so we need to get, be careful with it. This portion is going to be pushed. Seriously? Why oh, it's not pushing? Why oh, it's not pushing away? Uh, the form of the the, the 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 form of the top not not important at all most of this information is going to be kind of deleted uh, of course in order to understand how to properly place muscles and how to connect things we need to of course use the anatomy books so we need to understand like muscles of the neck although I'm pretty aware of muscles of the neck so we're going to have two muscles in here uh, we're going to have two muscles that are going to go around this area we're going to like figure out the actual like the neck usually is not just round the rest of the things we're going to solve with muscles but right now we just kind of want to put some base to establish some kind of things I guess it could work yeah and don't forget that neck are usually is usually going from bigger on top and smaller on the bottom and then muscles will make it work fine so yeah I guess that's kind of it again we extend a little bit session um, we need to kind of finish um, again we made our predictions who's going to win on Hell and Cell uh, hopefully these predictions will work but again as I said before the predictions is nothing but just a transitional point that will help us to let's put it in the perspective the transitional point that will help us to understand where the feuds are will continue because for me again as I said before I'm I'm not that 
big of a fan of the like in terms of the matches themselves of pay-per-views because usually pay-per-views are pretty bit pretty bad um compared to the shows shows much 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 better so because of this again i'm we made our predictions uh we are going to slowly finish um uh, next session is again going to be on wednesday and hopefully on wednesday we're going to talk a lot uh, about a lot of stuff so hopefully till Wednesday I will prepare something um, either we're going to continue to sculpt CM Punk and I will basically prepare some type of a process in two hours that is going to be continuous and hopefully we're going to kind of look how we're going to finish CM Punk um, and on uh, t t t Tuesday we probably or on Thursday we might start a different project and the next project is going to be AJ uh, so either that or we'll see again i can't tell 100 uh, percent what's going to happen because again uh, mm, next week i'm going to be even more busy than this week and each week the business my business will become much 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 stronger and uh, because of this i'm going to have less and less time to do this uh, since this is just a studying element, it's not necessarily something that we're going to probably present as a finished piece. I don't know. We'll see. It all depends where it's going to go. I'm definitely not going to like put uh, this sculpt itself as a finished piece. If I'm going to create it as a finished piece, I'm probably going to put it in a painting program and then like basically paint over it and repaint it a little bit, add some expressions and etc. I still don't know what exactly like the the final visual presentation of this project is going to be for me it's personally just a way to sculpt things um to study things and do such thing as that so uh, kind of it so um so this is our skull uh so yeah um for some reason there seem like separated so again we added most of the things that usually skulls don't have um, oh, by the way, we need to put we need to place ears a little bit lower. They definitely not in the right place. Yep, they need to be placed somewhere in here. Because this part goes here, and ears are somewhere in here. Yep. Yeah, right now it actually works better. Again, small, small, small change, and it's completely different look. Um, the the portraits are all about subtleties. This is the way that this thing works. So yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, again, we will continue with. Um... Wait a sec. Let's just save. Um, we will continue next week, uh, hopefully we're going to get a little bit further, uh, closer to the next week, uh, which hopefully is going to be a good stuff. So, um, yeah, again, we created everything that we needed outside of the skull, so again, just the skull itself not necessarily gives us that much of an information, but once we will add a nose, once we will add ears, once we will add a neck, then we kind of now have all connecting pieces to build muscles up, like on top of it because we can't build muscles if we don't have these elements uh, of course we could build muscles and work on muscles with the, without the ears without ears it's not necessarily true uh, to work with the without neck because there's a lot of muscles that basically connects to the neck so neck needs to be there um, and we actually need a nose in order to create a human <laughs> without nose it's going to look weird so I guess these are all pieces that we needed to, to put together before going into the actual anatomy stage and hopefully next time you were going to see the whole process already been done as a speed paint or uh, basically just a pre-recorded process of dealing with the anatomy um, so yeah again we're going slowly but we're going somewhere and it's a good thing as long as you're going somewhere as long as you're moving not standing in one place it's completely fine once you'll stop moving and procrastinating or just standing in one place and or circling around one place it's not necessarily beneficial to your growth so for me personally this is a good stuff and regardless of how slow we're going and my, maybe some of you would want to get to the final results even faster than in two weeks or a month but again 
as long as we get in there, we will get there. And with time, we will make things a little bit much more faster because I will gain more experience. And um, we're going to talk about different stuff and hopefully some people will join us and we will talk about something and etc. So if not, again, I will, I will be completely fine with just talking to myself and expressing all this th these things in, in the hope that someone sometime in the future will see this and gain something from it. So, or will decide to join us based on that, who knows. So yeah, that's kind of it for today. Uh, thank you for watching, thank you for being here, have a nice day or night, and see you in the next session. Eh, eh bye. Eh, Tony's, uh, body says goodbye, and I'm saying goodbye. Body says goodbye, and I'm saying goodbye. Body says goodbye, and I'm saying goodbye. Eh, bye. Thank you.